What in the world, Dave Brown? I think people have really started to pick on the Minnesota Twins. And so today we're going to talk about why that is. So this is Locked on Twins. You are Locked on Twins. Your daily Minnesota Twins podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hello again and welcome back to Locked On Twins. I'm your host, Brandon Warren, and you can unfollow me on Twitter at Brandon underscore W-A-R-N-E. And across the screen from me is Mr. Dave Brown at Answer Dave Brown on the X Twitter machine. And Dave, how are we doing today? Hey, Brandon, we're doing good. What's, uh, what's this about people picking on the Twins? I don't like that. Yeah, we're going to talk about that here momentarily but thanks for making locked on twins your first listen every day if you're picking on us every day we definitely do appreciate that and we're free and available wherever you get your podcasts and if you're looking at our beautiful faces you are also finding us on youtube which is exciting so uh as part of the locked on podcast network also your team every day please be interactive with the show thumbs up on youtube be it an actual emoji or Hitting the thumbs up button, we love to see it either way. Hit subscribe, all that good stuff. Five-star reviews go a long ways into a lot of different opportunities for us, so we would definitely appreciate that. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 Moneyline bet. That's $150 if your team wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. Dave, you were off on assignment yesterday. I didn't record, so we're catching up here. Um, but it's good to have you back. It's good to see you again. You look great. <laughs> Thanks, Brandon. I think I look how I usually do, which is just barely presentable. But uh, is that that's uh, that's all we need in this world, isn't it? Quite frankly, that's all you need. Um, so I reached out today. We're kind of talking, and I was like, you know, it's strange. You think of all the free agents who've signed so far, and it's an awful lot of them that have the common thread of they left the Twins. You got Kent Maeda, Sonny Gray, Emilio Pagan. Um, any of those three, you know, would have been nice to have back at a various price point. But when I look at all three of those, it's just like that combined with the fact that the Twins said the quiet part out loud about payroll and Bally and all that. Um, right now, morale is not all that high around here, around these parts, I don't think. And so, I don't know, what do you make of it? Because uh, none of those deals are deals I would have matched if I was the Twins. Two years, $8 million for Pagan, three years, $75 million for Gray, and then Maeda was uh, 2 and 24 which was pretty modest, but still not sure about two years. Um, how can you lift our spirits, Dave? Was Pagan, is there an opt-out in that one, by the way? I think so, yeah. I think so. I think you're right. Still, it seems like a a steep price, although if you look at, since he's coming to the league where he ranks among all relievers, uh, you know, it's not an outrageous price. It's sort of the price of doing business. When you're a relief pitcher that can, you know, he's that that was probably his best year, the second best season overall, and, and uh, in 2023, uh, personally speaking, but when you can be a mostly consistent reliever, that's a hard thing to do. And yep. teams are going to pay for that. Some teams are going to pay for that. I don't know if that's the best way for but maybe the twins to spend their money. Um, so I think it's, it's okay. I mean, that he's, he's replaceable. Um, I think they were probably interested in bringing in a couple of different guys anyway. Um, we'll see what that, entails as far as a trade or they're probably not going to spend too much in free agency there. Um, Sonny Gray, not an outrageous price that the Reds paid. Um, He's certainly, uh, there there are pitchers who are available in free agency who uh, maybe could match him maybe uh, uh, in a trade as well. So it's just, it is a kind of a bad coincidence for the, the feelings of, of Twins fans to lose these players in uh, in the early days of uh, of transactions here in the offseason. So it's just kind of a you, – you can't 
it's a it's a puzzle that um, they're going to spend the entire off season putting together, and you can't just look at what's happened in the first few days of movement of transactions and and panic and feel like, well, they've lost three twenty sixth of the team. What are we going to do? Um, but there's time for the Twins to uh, to react. Uh, they like you said. They probably knew they were going to lose these players anyway. It's not a surprise that they're gone. They have a plan. Whether you believe in them or not, it's up to you. But this isn't a shock for the Twins, even if it's stunning that it's kind of happened quickly. It's interesting to me that Pagan, I mean, I don't know how much the relief market actually gets set. You know, like you got to set this market. You got to set that market. Like, if Otani get well, Otani's going to be in a in a world all his own. But if you had, let's say, um, Cody Bellinger and then a similar type player, maybe two years older but a little better, you would wait for one or the other to sign to see what the other one's going to get relative to that. I don't know if the relief market applies there, and I also don't know where Emilio Pagan stood as far as like if you were to power rank re- relievers available. That sounds like. Uh, hurting cats. It sounds like a terrible exercise to have to write. I would read it. I would not write it. Um, but I don't. I don't get the sense that Pagan was at the top of that power ranking. So I'll be curious to see what guys like you know Robert Stevenson get. You know, um, you know, really nice year last year, uh, but also, less of a track record. What's that? Yeah, less of a track. Less record. of a track record. Well, and that cuts both ways. I mean, Pagan had given up homers in bushel loads for years. And so he's available, available for, um, you know, rocket rides to the outfield. So, I mean, it, it cuts both ways, though. Being available is still a thing. I just don't know what, though, like, what, what are the rest of these relievers' contracts going to look like? Are they going to be higher than we're thinking right now? Or, or is Pagan going to be kind of an anomaly? Kind of like, um, I think Trevor May a couple years ago, when he signed with the Mets, was kind of an anomaly where he got the amount he did and then, a bunch of other relievers came in underneath him and it didn't really make a lot of sense. But I think that maybe that, that was because it was the Mets and yeah, they were in a, in a free spending moment that could yeah. be, and you have to think about stuff like that. Uh, you know, mentioned how the, the timing doesn't make fans feel good about losing these players. Right. But on the other hand, maybe the Reds are, you know, they've identified Pagan as a guy that they want. We're going to give him a, a premium on the offer and you know he does have an opt out in it too it's not like which is interesting to me when a player has an opt out it's like you feel like the player must think that there's a better deal down the road for him possibly yeah, and that's it's, weird it, that is kind of strange in Pagan's place you wouldn't necessarily think that but you know it, it does put a little bit of pressure on him to perform not that he didn't want to perform well anyway but to have yeah. another season like he did this year, thinking, well, in the next market, maybe I can get three years guaranteed. I guess maybe that's he's betting on himself in that way. So um, it's, you know, the timing of it, the Reds want to make their splash. I think Roster Resource, a website I like, Love it. In the eighth inning for them. Uh, you know, they have Lucas Sims, too, and some other players. Mm-hmm. Uh, Cruz is another guy in the, in the back of the bullpen. Uh in the middle of the bullpen that they could it's use. Like, yeah. The Reds are kind of putting, it was a bullpen was sort of a weak spot at the beginning of last year. Yeah. Now it's turning into more of a, of a strength for them. But, um, but Pagan, you know, he, he can be replaced. And it is true that uh, relief pitchers, that the performances can swing and vary so much. The twins could bring in a guy like Stevenson who uh, finished the season so well last year. Um and I'm not saying it has to be him exactly, but players like that, you know, become available. You know, you see things uh, in scouting. You, mm-hmm. you know, you can uh, make something out of nothing, basically, and sort of build your your bullpen that way. It's it's never spending money on relief pitchers is is really mm-hmm. tricky. Other than the elite ones, you you miss a lot on that. And we'll see if the Reds have missed on Pagan, but. Um, it's not the best way to spend money, especially when you have apparently limited funds to spend. So you're telling me if a team were to sign Liam Hendricks and have Kendall Graveman making a bunch of money 
And maybe Craig Kimbrell, too. That probably wouldn't be a good idea. Who are you talking about? I don't know. Uh, no, I yeah. Uh, well, I, it, yeah. I mean, it wasn't uh, the best way for the White Sox to operate. Yeah. And they, it's funny because, you know, Jerry Reinsdorf has a, kind of a history of not being willing to pay the starting pitchers very much money. It's You don't have to pay the relievers as much, but still it was a big layout for – uh, to uh, to uh, to fund such a small part of the the roster, you know, it was it's not the way that you typically want to go, and that's not necessarily why the White Sox were bad. Oh, but that no. still doesn't make it a good uh, tactic. Well, we're going to take a quick second. We're going to talk about our friends at FanDuel. When we come back, Dave. One of your targets is off the free agent market. Dun dun dun. We will talk about that in just a moment. But first, a word from FanDuel. So we're actually uh, peeking behind the curtain. We're recording during Thursday night football. So this is actually a pretty apt apt little ad we're going to read here. But if you are looking to score early this NFL season with FanDuel, that's America's number one sports book, you can get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. The app is so easy to use. And there's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, overs, unders, and more. And again, that's 150 bucks if your team wins. This isn't like one of those survivor pools where you got to get tricky, you got to get goofy because you don't get to use teams multiple times. You just need to get that W. So, um, again, 150 bucks if your team wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel is an official partner of the NFL. All right, we're back in the mix, back here in the bullpen. And if you have not heard yet, Locked On has launched the first ever national 24-7 sports streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7 covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. Also, thanks for making us your first listen every day. If you're an everydayer, uh, please make sure to hang out with us the rest of the offseason as we break down what is bound to be a very, very active and um, possibly annoying offseason for the Twins. So far, so good if you're a Twins fan because you are probably hot and or bothered, which is um, which is tough. Uh, let's talk about this first. Those doggone Reds signing your guy, Nick Martinez, to a two-year deal worth, uh, I think, $26 million. So less AAV than his option was with, but got another year. I don't recall if the structure allows for an opt-out there or not either, but uh, it's going to be interesting to see because the, the presupposition is that he's going to go to camp as a starter. We keep hearing all of this talk this chatter that the twins might be interested in a picture of that caliber um you know what what are your thoughts here the reds being sticks in the mud again the dastardly reds stealing pagan and now my twin starter yep nick martinez well i guess he's i would think he's going to be a starting pitcher yep. um yeah that that's uh that one hurts a little bit more uh you know we'll see what else the twins have in mind uh, you know, we're not going to panic about losing Nick Martinez, but it's not. Uh, I think there is an opt out of the deal, I believe. I think so. Um, and it, it's not a huge outlay for him. Uh, you know, what was uh, taking Spencer Steer not enough for you, Reds? It's just now you're you're taking more players uh, with and without the, 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 the Twins 40 man sphere. It's not fair, mm. but um, it's just rude. You know, Again, it is rude. It's but like sort of like with Pagan, maybe a little less uh, to a lesser extent. You can replace a, a Nick Martinez. So, um, especially if you never had him. I like yes. I like <laughs> this move for the for the Reds. I do too. If we were doing locked on Reds, I'd be very happy right now for that. Well, they have a guy for that, and he's he's actually the one who's in charge. So 
that probably won't happen for us. Well, I don't want to steal that then. We, we're going to leave him alone and with his locked on hey, reds. Let me ask you, at the contracts they got, who would you rather have, Kent Maeda or Nick Martinez? In general, and then if you're the Twins, or maybe that's the same answer. There's just some question with Maeda getting into his mid thirties, and uh, I, how far is he now removed from Tommy John? Um, I think I'd rather have Nick Martinez, and I'll probably be wrong. I'll just not by a huge margin, but maybe maybe ten or fifteen percent more confident yep. than yep. him. As far as who's going to make thirty starts this year, I would say I and and have more innings. I'm going to say Nick by uh, Kent has had some great uh, moments in his career and maybe he'll bounce back and, and be more like the guy he was with the Dodgers. But um, I think, you know, maybe enough time has passed from that, that I don't know if he's going to get that back. And I don't know if enough time has passed since Tommy John that he can, um, you know, be, be his old self either. It's kind of working against him in both ways there. Uh, so I like Nick Martinez a little bit more as far as, you know, which, which, you know, which guy would I rather have? I'd rather have him going into next season. Yeah. And I think I would too. Um, I was, I was looking back at an old, something, something that had happened to the Dodgers, like a high profile moment. And Kento was pitching that day and it had never occurred to me until now. I want to say it was maybe uh, the Chase Utley slide. Oh, with, was he uh, on the mound for that? I think he might've been or something like it was some kind of moment like that. It just, it blew my mind to be like, Oh yeah, that, that was Kenta. And you know, right. just uh, him happening to be there. Um, So the, they keep saying, yeah, twins might want to go the route of a back end starter. Uh, I'm not certain about that, but Ralph says they're going to, or thought they're going to by Ralph. I mean, Jim Bowden, of course. Um, <laughs> yeah. But, I forgot about Ralph. Was... Yeah. If you, if you don't know, now, you know, actually you probably don't, but you should go look it up. Um, he said the twins, he could see them signing Wade Miley. And it was like one year, 12 million, 13 million, you know. Um, and no disrespect to Wade Miley, but just, blech, I no, 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 no. I, that to me makes no sense. He struck out fewer than six per nine. I know he had the decent ERA, but I just don't see it at all. Like if they're going to go the end, the way of a, a back end guy, to me, and, and that's not meaning to besmirch Miley. Um, I would think they'd go with someone with a little more strikeout potential, like if Nick Pavetta was a free agent, um, a Drew Smiley type, you know, someone who at least you can count on to strike out eight, eight and a half per nine. Um, and even still, like that only muddies the waters where you have Bailey Ober, Joe Ryan. Whoever you bring in, you want to be in that ilk. I don't know that I would even put Wade Miley there. And then, and then so what what are you actually gaining from that? You know, are you replacing Kent Maeda? Really? Um, so I just I don't know. I don't it felt to me like he had a homework assignment, he got all the big teams done, and then he's like, Oh shoot, who do the twins? Yeah, yeah. Nobody, nobody's gonna pay attention to the twins, they can have Wade Miley. And I, to me, that's frustrating because national coverage shouldn't be like that. But I just I, I don't see a way where Wade Miley is their guy. This is a division winner we're talking about. <laughs> they should not be disrespected with secondhand scraps. Although Wade uh, has he's got a no hitter under his belt. Mm -hmm. His uh, he's had he's always kind of fought those expectations uh, yep. of of being so low um, and, and come through and. You know I I don't know it's uh, it doesn't it isn't sexy it doesn't really move the needle. Uh, it doesn't make you think like has there ever been, improving. Has there ever been anybody named Wade that was sexy though? Like, I just think Wade that Davis. Okay, Wade but Davis. As a, wasn't as a starter, he was bad, right? Right. Well, I don't think we're going to move Wade Miley to the bullpen and make him sexy or better. So okay. I don't think that's that's going to work that way. Um, yeah, I, feel, I feel bad for saying it, but he kind of looks like a Stephen Avery before picture. Ed Wade, the general manager, wasn't sexy either. So if you reverse the names, that no. that doesn't help. Uh, no. But um, maybe the exception. Well, you showed me today that uh, there's interest in uh, um, Eduardo Ed, Edward uh, 
Help me out. The guy in the Marlins. Oh, Edward Cabrera. Edward Cabrera. Yeah. Uh, you know, that would be a trade. And I think that, you know, we're talking free agents. But remember, earlier uh, in earlier shows that we've done, we've kind of brought up the fact that the Twins probably aren't that interested in, in many free agents, certainly early in free agency. We'll, we'll see right. if they can pick over the carcass later. But uh, Edward Cabrera is a guy who – uh, you know, you could get in a trade who's apparently available, who apparently the Marlins are willing to, to you know, that might move the needle a little bit. There's kind of a, Wood for me. Got a higher ceiling and maybe a lower floor, but um, less reliable, but maybe more of a payoff. I think that's still a, a, a route to pursue. But with Sandy Hurt, too, though, like that depth chart isn't as deep as it looked before. Um, that's so true. But the Marlins, you never know what they're playing for. You know, they, they've right. got a, a new GM, uh, you know, they, they kind of, they sort of half went for it last year, sort of surreptitiously. I don't know if anybody realized they were going for it and they made the playoffs as it turned out, you know, even yep. though they didn't have Sandy uh, at a hundred percent and uh, you know, you know, who knows what the Marlins motivations are. So, uh, and uh, it's not like Eduardo Cabrera is so good that, well, we're building around this guy. They're not doing that anymore. So uh, I, I still say it doesn't have to be him, but maybe that's still a, a trade, a Pablo Lopez light kind of trade is where the, the Twins are going to go to fill the, the spot in the rotation. Well, I think especially if guys like Luis Severino are getting $12 million plus in free agency, um, Severino is certainly a popular maybe not bounce back candidate from the analytics side of things, but from a, how good he used to be to how good you hope he can be again. Yeah. Standpoint, um, you know, cause you, you mentioned Trevor Rogers cause they said they might trade him too. And a lot of these guys, we don't know where they're at physically. Like if you think Luis Severino last year was just off, that's one thing, but like if he's got a bad rotator cuff or shoulder or elbow, um, that's a whole lot different than just, Hey, maybe we get this guy throwing more sliders or adding right. a you know, so there's a lot of aspects to that that we have to consider. And if we also think the Twins are going to kind of swim in that uh, that water, so to speak, that shallow one-year water, they may have to wait a while to see who shakes out, whether it's a James Paxton type who could be interesting, could even be exciting, or if it's going to be a Wade Miley type where, you know what, you could get 180 innings from him and they'd be the least exciting 4.20 ERA you ever got but that would move the needle for you over the course of a season. So it's hard to lose all these players early and then to not have any interest early. Um, you know, I can see the dissonance the Twins fans are feeling. Right. Uh, James Paxton had a, a better year I, than I kind of expected him to yep. last year. Yep. Uh, a really nice bounce back season. Uh, you, know, you get him in, locked in when he's healthy. He moves the needle for me a little he's bit nasty. more than, than Miley. Yeah, he's yeah. so good. But also, uh, track record of health is is the whole reason why someone hasn't given him five years and a hundred and million hundred million to this point in his career. I mean, if he had continued his progress unimpeded, he would be a very wealthy man right now uh, with a multi year deal. That's kind the of whole. in the Jordan Montgomery mold. You know, Jordan Montgomery is going to get paid like James Paxton we thought would yep. get paid at one time, like Robbie Ray. You know, those lefties who need some time. And so, yeah, I mean, we'll see what happens, but um, say, uh, what did you think, what did you make of how the Sonny Gray contract was laid out? Because he's going to make 10 million this year, and then it's going to careen all the way to 35 million in the last year, plus a buyout of an option. Uh, to me, this feels like a very motivated buyer, a seller who was willing to milk every last bit of uh, juice from the contract and is willing to take a little less up front. I mean, good for Sonny for getting the deal, but man, it's possible that that is a really painful $35 million to spend in uh, 2026. One thing that comes to mind here, and the, the twins are having to deal with this too, is the business with Bally Sports and the, the local TV contract and exactly how that shakes out for the Cardinals. So it sounds like to me they're, um, planning on having to make a change maybe next year, maybe at the end of this year. Um, and there's a certain amount of uncertainty 
mm-hmm. in the short term where that extra money is going to come from. But figuring that they're the Cardinals, hey, in a couple years, you know, well, uh, it gets us better in the meantime. But in a couple years, our TV deal is going to be sorted out. And uh, you figure somebody is going to pay them lots of money to broadcast the games, the Cardinals being a popular team that they are. Right. But that that whole thing, you know, smells of uh, maneuvering to deal with the, the local TV contract. I also think there's going to be part of it, too, where they still want to add and add and add just because True. it was so disappointing. So there'll be some of that to it as well. A couple moves for the Twins as we wrap up here. Uh, Giovanni Moran and Ronnie Enriquez re-signing on minor league deals. Um, Moran, a multi-year minor league deal, rarely seen, but he's going to be having TJ or had TJ and will miss next year. Twins did that with Brock Stewart, and it was a a really nice deal to get a guy not only to their surgery, but through their surgery and on the other end of it. And so we'll see what happens there. Enriquez, also interesting, but a really tough year at St. Paul last year, but you know, a couple arms to just kind of file back in the back of your brain. Um, well, with Brock Stewart too, I could have brought him up earlier with Pagan. Yep. Yep. That's a guy who ended the season uh, favorably. Uh, you know, everybody likes his stuff and what he brings. That could be a guy who settles into that seventh, eighth inning role. Uh, you know, I think the twins probably want to have more insurance there. Yeah. But they're going to be counting on him from opening day, which they didn't have last year. So that right. sort of cushions the blow uh, of not having Pagan anymore. Uh, and like we said, they were planning on a ha- not having Pagan. So Brock Stewart enter- enters into the calculus in that way as someone to look forward to in the in the later innings. Well, and I wonder, too, the later the offseason goes, where either the money situation gets resolved or maybe it just is a little better going into spring training than they expect what the marketplace will look like for relievers on one year deals. in let's say the, the middle of February, you know, because I'm sure a lot of them will have signed, but if, if David Robertson is still sitting out there looking for the best fit, you know, 39, 40 years old, um, a guy that age, that good looking for a one year deal to me, that feels very, uh, very Minnesota twins to, to me. Yeah, that would be, uh, the kind of move they're probably expecting to make, I think. And I think it's prudent. You know, there, there are some positions that you should be aggressive on when it comes to spending and free agency. And there are some that you should be wait and see. And I think relief pitchers, even late inning ones can be one of those, especially with older guys like Robertson Yeah, is definitely more of a wait and see, you know, you don't need to rush them in the camp or anything. It's uh you, they know how to take care of themselves. It makes sense to wait on it. You just need to be patient. Yeah, not their first rodeo. Well, uh, that's a wrap. That's it for this one. Uh, we're trying to figure out why everybody's picking out on these minutes, picking on these Minnesota Twins, and you know, it's just uh, it's just the time of year. Um, everybody's getting a little stir crazy. It's going to be December before most of you listen to this, and uh, yeah, so it's pretty exciting. We're going to start a new month. We're going to start a new. Uh, full month with Dave as co-host, which is also exciting. Dave, though, you're uh, you're feeling good. You're ready to get energized and dive into December with us. Yes, the winter meetings are coming up. That'll give us a lot to talk about and maybe make fun of. And they're in Nashville, so maybe Dolly Parton will show up. So uh, that's what I'm hoping for. That that would be a good visual. Yeah, those should be. I've I've been told they should be uh, sponsored by like Emergency or something because there's so much sickness. That goes around. Uh, this is pre-COVID, I might add. Um, it's just so many people in such small, cramped spaces that everybody gets seems to get a cold. So, anyway, um, take your emergency, use your uh, sanitizer, and everything will be fine. And uh, Derek Falvey and Thad Levine, let's get it done. Let's go. <laughs> anyway, uh, this is it. This is Locked On Twins. Thanks for joining us for Dave Brown and Brandon Warren. This is uh, me signing off, saying thanks, and we'll see you tomorrow night.